Hey, what's up guys? It is me, Mr. Boomnastic, as well known as Rental Man Buck here. Today, we're going to go into the topic of modding. Now, I'm going to try and pull a small, quick tutorial on how to make something that is a very simple texture wrap replacement slash you can create an ad strip, which is a maneuverable sticker. Both of them are completely different. A texture wrap is um, when you have a three, when you have a model like a flag, the flag packs can be what we're going to work on today. And it's a sticker that goes over the top of a model, like the flag, and it just wraps around it. It doesn't, you can't move it. If you move the sticker, you move the flag. But the other one is an ad strip, which is a maneuverable sticker that you can place anywhere. It could be on a building, it could be on a car, it could be on anything you technically want. It could just be a sticker that you can buy. But we're going to make this simple as to how to create these, put them on the mod, and we're not going to take them into game just because of the... Because of the simplicity of this, as long as you get the file paths of all this stuff right, which I can explain once we get to the modding part, you don't need to touch anything besides unzip it, put this in, zip it back up, put it in game, and it's there. This is this is bare bone minimum. So the three things you're going to need are Giants Editor, which I'll show you guys how to get if you don't know how, a modification, which any PC mod site, you want to get a flagpole, just look one up, or mower or something, whatever you want you're going to need a mod. And then lastly, you're going to need a Photoshop software. I personally use paid.net. It's about a seven, eight dollar Photoshop. Um, I think it's about six bucks right now in the Microsoft store. But again, I'll show you guys how to get to all this stuff. Uh, yes, the Photoshop I did pay for, but the thing is, is that it's, it's a lifetime thing. You, once you get it, you only pay the seven bucks. It's no monthly stuff. And also you get, you know, you can do so much with it. It's worth it. Trust me. Now, if you're not doing texture stuff like what I do, a lot of the times when I create my own decals, you don't need the Photoshop. You just need the Giants Editor. But to do the editing with the with creating your own decals, you need to have a Photoshop. So let's get quick into the part where we get Giants Giants Editor. So when you get into Google, you're going to need to go into Giant. You need to look up Giants Editor. You'll click on this second one or just where it says Downlo Downloads GDN, Giants Developer Network. It's going to bring you to a page where it'll show this home screen. It'll look like this. And what you're going to need to do is if you don't have an account with this, it'll show a little blue box here to where you can click register or log in. If you don't have an account, you'll hit register. You'll create your account. And once you're done, you'll go back to this page. You'll click on Downloads. And if you guys have no idea, again, what you're doing here, this is a lot, and you'll have no idea what to get. That's okay. So how this is going to work is there's two different editors for two different games. Giants Editor version 8.1, that's FS19. But if you come up here where it says version 7.1, that's FS17. You just need to know that you need to get this 8.1 right here. Download it, install it, simple as that. To get the paint.net, how I did it is Microsoft Store, search bar, and paint.net. No space. And right here, it says $7, but I already bought it, so I don't know if it's $10. Um, but then you'll get this, same thing, install it, you'll be fine. Download a mod, you can do that as well. You'll get all of this, and there's two ways to get this zip file to look like this folder. You can do the first one, which is right click, extract, it'll do that, and boom, you'll have an open, you'll have an open folder. The only the other way to do this is if you go into the editor, let it load up here. You file, open mod, wherever your mod is, which mine's on the desktop, click double click it, working directory okay. OK, and boom, there's your flat. Those are the two ways to open a mod in Giants Editor. Now, if you're doing it the way I did it the first time, all you need to do is open the folder. And just close out of this one quick. No, we don't want to save it. Um, there's going to be all these different things. There's going to be an XML, mod description. This is the store picture. I just named it weird when I did this first. Textures, program files, these things you don't need to worry about. This is where once we create like this which is the store we'll need to make sure we move that texture into this folder so when we have our file paths like this where it does all this nebraska diffuse stuff and 
junk. So when we turn it into the game, if you put this flag on, it doesn't look like this when you zip it up. You have to make sure they're all in the correct spots, that way it shows up correctly. So to get this flag to look, say we want to change this flag to the American flag. This is how you do a texture wrap fix. So what we'll do is we'll go onto Google, we'll search up an American flag. I typed in a PNG because that's what gets you this transparent background. But all you need to do is an image like this. What you'll do is you'll copy the image and you'll go into your Photoshop software, which again, I have paint.net. You'll create a new, like a new picture right here. And you'll paste your image. But because of how this image works out, I prefer to take this image with the little tool right here, which is a rectangular select, compressing control and using the mouse scroll key, I'm gonna scroll in, and then I'm just gonna left click and drag, as well as scrolling. Scrolling down moves your thing down, and pressing right on your scroll key, on your scroll button will move it over. And what we're gonna do, we're just going to get this to the other side of the image. We're going to get the full thing encased. We're going to copy it with Control C. Again, new document. And paste it. So now we have just the flag. We can delete this one because we do not need it. So from here, oh, we're missing something. Hang on a minute. Let's take that because I don't want any of that transparency, transparency to be affecting this. So we'll move that. We'll take this move select pixels, we'll drag it down one, go back up to here, and bring it up one. So that way we just get rid of that transparent. It's not going to do anything to the image, it's just a way to save time for that. So we will save this image, because of the way Farm Sims pictures work, we need to save it as a direct drawing surface. Now when it comes to this, if this flag had a hole in it, so let's take an eraser, and let's say we wanted that to be, boom, we wanted those to show, but when we flew the flag, we wanted to be able to see through that part of the flag. How we would do that is we have to go to File, Save As, let's go to, to save it to the desktop, we're not actually going to save it. You have to click on this drop down menu and click on Direct Draw Surface, DDS. That'll save it into the format of, like say, the store ones. All these textures are in DDS formats. We'll save it as, say, American flag picture, but we'll just leave it as untitled for right now. Open, save. But we're actually not going to save. This is all I wanted to show you guys. With that image being the holes there, you need to have this set, because it's going to stock you with one of these two. You're going to need to set it to DC3 Linear DX15. What that's going to do for you is it'll save the image in a way that these holes will show when you fly the flag. If you don't, it'll just be a black background and you'll just have a bunch of black squiggly lines or wherever you want to put or however you want to do the transparency. So what we'll do from here, because this image is small enough in resolution, meaning it's, it's not too big for the editor to compress into... Like, I'm going to wrap this flag, but if I have an image that's like 2,000 by 2000 resol resolution, it's gonna be too big and the editor will crash. But if it's too small, then you can't, because then it will crash again because you can't read this. So you gotta make sure it's about the right size. The best way to be sure is if you just open a mod and go to its store picture, open that up, copy your image, bring it over, place it, and then just stretch it to fit. And then you'll do the same thing. You'll save it as whatever you want. Make sure you have the correct file. I just leave it on the DC315X or whatever it is. So in case if there's something that's transparent, I don't have to worry about it. And once you get that done, you need to go back into your mod. And wherever you save that file, you need to bring it and put it into your texture folder. Or if you already did, just save that file to your texture folder. So what we'll do from here is we're going to save this document we're going to save this one as direct drawing surface dds we're going to do afp for american flag picture and we're already in the file path so we just need to go into texture and click save 
And we already got everything else lined up. And boom, it's been saved to that folder. So we don't even have to reenact all of the moving of it. So what we'll do is this albedo map controls your flag. And that picture is what I took off of Google Images. So you'll click this little three dot here, then you'll click this little three dot, and it'll take you to that texture folder. But because we named the flag in the folder, we don't have to worry about moving it. We'll just double click that picture, and obviously that's messed up, but then we can click that, and boom, you have the American flag. We'll just click out, and what you can do from here is you would save it, and you'd close the folder back up. But if you want to save space, you would delete the old flag, but because of purposes of my end, I'm not going to. I'm actually just going to delete the modification itself. So that's how you guys do a texture wrap fix. The more complex ones are, those are a little more high end. But how we're, next thing we're going to do is learn how to do add strips, which would be like this. The deer sticker where you got the little bit of transparency on the sides, but you're able to move the sticker without moving the mod. How this works is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to find an image and you're going to need to create a certain piece so that way you can do that. So let's hide the mower for a second and we're going to open up this. This is a plane. How to create this is you have to go up to this little tab called create. You're going to need to create a primitive plane and that's what's going to create this little box which is what our texture would be sitting in. Click that, you click that, American flag, and boom, we have this. We can move it around freely. These little squares that are on the end, that's your scale. Obviously, stretching it, like, thickness won't work, but you can square that so it's smaller that way, or longer and skinnier that way. So that's how you guys do that. But if I were you guys just to create any sort of thing you want, what I used to do what I have done is I've created a save of one. This is just from a plane that I created a while ago. I saved this as a, I just, I saved it by clicking file, save as i3d to my desktop. I have desktop folders, sign, and then I have this sign i3d. That's what this is. I just saved it as one, so every time I import it, this file path is technically empty, meaning I can put a different texture on it every time. So if you have two different decals you want to put on, all you need to do is import one, put the first picture on it by, again, albedo map, flag, boom. And then I can go again, import the flag of the sign. And I have this weird thing where I did it like this. But one, one, bang, bang. So like that, it's just blank again. And all I need to do is go into the textures and voila, see, two different things. So it helps when you wanna get two different decals on certain things. And that's all you technically need to do. If you wanna get these things to be toggleable, that's more of a code thing, which I can do in a different video some other time, but this is the basics. I wanna create a sticker or replace something to have my own flag on my farm. So if I'm living in Maine, but the only flag I can find out there is a Connecticut one, you just go in there, find the image of your Maine flag, copy it, paste it, put it on top of the, the process that I went through. And all you need to do, save the mod, zip up that um, folder, which would be, say, this one. Nope, nope, hang on. Close out of this stuff. All you need to do is go into the folder itself, control A, so it has the entire mod, and you will just do, if you have WinRAR like me, you'll just add to archive, zip, and then OK, and you'll get a little folder that'll look like this. And that's how you guys create the mod. Same thing goes with the add strip on the vehicles. You'll just go into their mod folder, control A, select all those files, and zip it up. That's if you guys do not want, that's if you guys just want the sticker to be present. Sorry guys, just a disclaimer on this. Um, when it comes to that add strip, when, it, when I originally did this, I forgot to mention this. Your ad strip will be, when you create that plane or whatever it is I did with the sticker, it'll be outside of this main 
piece of the actual model. All you need to do to make sure it doesn't really cause any errors or whatever it is, is just control X, control V, so you cut and paste and put it inside the model so that way it doesn't throw any errors. That's it for that one, guys. Sorry about that. That's going to probably do it for this video, guys. I hope this helps some people out if they just wanted to do some basic edits. It might be a little long and a little wordy and possibly a little fast. I do apologize for that, but this is the best I could explain it without overpowering somebody. This is actually exactly what I started my 19 modding career with, was flags. So that's why I'm just kind of trying to help somebody else if they want to get their start. Just kind of start with something simple. There's no way in heck I could have done any of the mods that I'm doing right now without starting with the basics. Make sure to check out the guys in the Boomstick Club. Go support those guys in their channels. Really good shot, a really big shout out to those guys. I mean, I might have not started where I did, but to get to the point where I did, everybody in our group all has kind of a different role. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Comment, like, subscribe down below. Smash that like button if you guys like this. Um, like I said earlier, hopefully this helped. Uh, this is Rental Man out. Peace, guys.